Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to talk about the new Salesforce integration user license, which was launched in the Salesforce DX developer conference. So uh, let's start. So firstly, we will discuss what is the need of this license. So following the principle of least privilege. So principle of least privilege is that no one has more access than what they require uh, in a system. So following this principle, Salesforce recommends creating and configuring one Salesforce user for each integration. Let's say from Salesforce, we have multiple integrations to different system. So Salesforce is recommending that we create different user for every integration. So by assigning a different user to each following system, uh, we restrict each of those users to a unique subset, subset of data and functionality. Uh, it minimizes the impact if a user or integration is compromised. So let's say only one of the integration will fail, other will keep on running if uh, there is any issue with a specific user. The Salesforce integration license user uh, supports the best practice, this best practice by offering a profile that restricts assigned users to API only access and which is ideal for system to system integrations. So Salesforce has provided these licenses uh, as part of uh, enterprise unlimited performance and developer edition orgs. In the developer editions, we are only given one license, but in the other orgs, there can be up to five licenses. So which the use, which the system admins can use to support their multiple integrations. Uh, now let's discuss more about this license. So uh, when we choose the Salesforce integration license, we can assign the Salesforce API only system integrations profile. So when we select, uh, when we are creating a user and when we select this license, there is only one available profile that is the Salesforce API only system integration profile. And uh, with this profile, uh, the API only permission is enabled by default and user is uh, limited to interact with Salesforce via only the API, not through the Salesforce login screen. So we can also use the Salesforce integration API permission set license to extend and restrict specific users and object permissions. So uh, since we know that Salesforce is uh, moving towards end of life on profiles, so we can extend the user's permissions or the object permissions with a permission set, which, which will have the Salesforce integration uh, API permission set license. This in user license is designed for system to system integrations. It may not be used for human users to access data or features through any user interface. So let's see a demo in our org now. I'll go to my org. So uh, firstly, I'll go to the new user screen. Uh, I'm on the new user screen from the user license. I'll select the Salesforce integration. So this is the new license. And now if I click on see on profile, I can only see the Salesforce API only system integration profile I can select. So I can fill in all those fields, all this uh, remaining fields and click on save. Once I do that, um, I have already created one user. Now let me go to this profile and show you guys the Salesforce API only system integrations profile. And uh, if in the profile, if I click on system permissions, I can only see there are three permissions that are available by default. And those are already selected for us. That is the API enabled uh, API only user. So uh, if you guys know that if you want to use the Salesforce or 2.0 client credentials flow. So this, uh, and we need to select the running user, then the running user must have the API only permission. So which we will see later in the demo. And then we have the chatter internal user. So uh, this user can uh, use all the chatter features with this permission. Apart from that, we can provide in, uh, if I click on object settings, uh, and other than that, we can provide the Apex class access, name credential access, custom metadata types access, custom permissions to this user. We can also provide the login hours, login IP ranges. So if I click on the object, so I can see only a few objects here, which I can provide. Uh, I see in the object settings, I can see only a few objects, uh, which the user can, uh, which we can provide the user the access to. So are uh, not all of standard objects and custom objects are available in this screen. So to extend that, we need to provide the Salesforce. Uh, uh, we need to create a permission set and we need to uh, provide the permissions and then assign th that permission set to this user. So let's do that. Let me search for permission sets. On the permission set screen, I'll click on new. 
and in the license i'll select the salesforce api integration license and i'll click on save Uh, yeah now i in this when i create when i have created this you know, information set i can see these permissions available i'll click on object settings and in the object settings i'll provide uh view all access let's say to the user for this account i'll provide the record type access and the view all access for uh, this user uh, since we have to access accounts uh, when we see uh, the integration demo later, I'll click on manage assignments. I'll click on add assignments. I'll select that. I'll click next and assign permission. So one assignment has been done. I'll go back to this user. So I can see that permission set has been assigned with the account view all access. Now I'll go to the connected app screen so i've already created one connected app uh, you can do the same by uh, going to app manager and selecting new connected app uh, then you have to select the oauth permission uh, checkbox and then you can provide some random callback url and select the enable client credential flow checkbox here now uh, after we do that we need to provide the running user uh, so this flow is basically used for uh, system to system integrations. Uh, if you want to see a full demo, you can view my video uh, on OAuth client credential flow. So now I'll click on edit policies and I have to select the uh, running user for uh, client credential flow here. So I'll select the integration user test since it has the Salesforce integration profile, a user license and uh, the API only permission created our user and we have assigned the running user to this connected app and now we will uh, use the OR 2.0 client credential flow to run our integration so for that i'll go to postman and uh, this is the token url and i have used the grant type as client credentials or uh, the client id and the client secret and i'll click on send so i've got the access token i'll uh, use this access token to make a get query request so for that i need to go uh, first add this access token i go to headers i'll click on authorization i'll select authorization and in the value i'll type bearer slash token right and now i just need to make a get request to the salesforce Point, endpoint i'll make change it to get so what i'm doing is i'm making a rest api query uh since we saw we have already provided the view all access for account so this query should run us it should provide us with the view all uh, all the accounts available so let's do a query so we have got the accounts list here so yeah, you can you can uh, pro extend the access to other objects or other custom objects and use this integration user license. Uh, give the integration user with the required permissions and use the integration user license for your integrations in the future. So thanks everyone for watching this video and uh, do subscribe to the channel for more such videos in the future.